Welcome to Master Math. This lesson's about square roots. But before we get started, I want to remind you that when you come to a You Try It slide, hit your pause button, pull out some paper, with a pencil try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to the answer. Now let's get into square roots. You know that 2 times 2 equals 4. And you know you can write that 2 squared equals 4, or 2 to the second power equals 4. Well, today we're going to talk about the fact that there's an inverse to squaring. There's kind of an opposite of squaring, and that's the square root. If 2 squared equals 4, then the square root of 4 equals 2. The square root of a number is a number that you can multiply by itself and that product will equal the original number. Well, let's create a chart with uh, integers in it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. I can create a second column with the squares of each of those numbers. The square of 1 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. The square of 2 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16, and so forth. Now those are whole numbers, and they represent perfect squares. If you take the square root of a number and you get a whole number, that's a perfect square. Well, here's another column of numbers. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and so forth. Let's put in a column of what those square to. Negative 1 squared equals 1. A negative number times a negative number is going to yield a positive number. Negative 2 squared is 4. Minus 2 times minus 2 equals positive 4. Well, this is kind of weird. I've got a column of negative numbers, a column of positive numbers, but the squares are exactly the same. Well, what that means is the square root of 16 equals 4. You can see that. 16 is the square. The square root would be 4. But the square root of 16 also equals minus 4. Minus 4 squared equals 16. So minus 4 is also a square root of 4. The square root of 16 actually means or equals either plus or or minus 4. Well, we've got this charts of the whole numbers and their squares. But what if somebody came to you and said, I need you to find out the square root of 18. The square root of 18. Well, let's see. Going down this chart of square root or squares, and I don't see 18. I see 16. I see 25. And 18 somewhere in between those two. But I don't see 18. And I know the square root of 16 is 4. And I know the square root of 25 is 5. 16 and 4, 25 and 5. Well, my 18 is somewhere in between those two. So my 18 is going to be more than 4, but less than 5. It's going to be 4 plus a little bit. Well, let's put this on a number line. We've got 16, which is the square of 4, here. And I got 25, which is the square of 5 here. And 18 is the number I want to get the square root of. Well, when I look at that, I see 18 is a lot closer to 4 than it is to 25. I'm going to say it's about 2 tenths of the way between 16 and 25. So that would mean that the square root of 18 is 2 tenths larger than the square root of 16. So the square root of 18 would equal approximately 4.2. We can test that. We could say 4.2 times 4.2 equals something. And in fact, it equals 17.64. 17.64 is less than 18. So we know that our actual square root is going to be a little bit bigger than 4.2. We could also go to and try 4.3. And if we multiplied 4.3 times 4.3, we'd get an answer that was a little bit bigger than 18. 
Now, 18 is about halfway in between these two numbers. So I would think that the actual square root would be halfway in between 4.2 and 4.3. And I would estimate that the square root of 18 is approximately 4.25. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. What is the square root of 100? Well, to some extent, you're going to have to either memorize some of the basic whole perfect squares, or you're going to have to do a little trial and error. But with a little trial and error, you'd probably see that, a, that 10 times 10 equaled 100. So if 10 times 10 equals 100, the square root of 100 equals 10. What is the approximate square root of 52? Well, let's find some squares that are near it. 7 times 7 equals 49. The next number up, 8 times 8 equals 64. Now my 52 is kind of between the 49 and the 64. And it's only 3 away from the 49, but, it's a, but there's a whole 15 unit difference between 49 and 64. So 52 is 3 fifteenths of the way between 49 and 64. 52 is 3 fifteenths of the way between 49 and 64. 3 over 15 equals 0.2. So I'm going to guess that the square root of 52 is bigger than 7 by about 0.2. And I'm going to estimate that the square root of 52 equals approximately 7.2. Simplify the square root of 36 divided by the square root of 4. And I could also describe that as simplify radical 36 divided by radical 4 because this symbol is known as the radical symbol. It means the square root, but we could say either the square root of 36, or root 36, or radical 36. So, simplify radical 36 divided by radical 4. Well, there's a couple ways I could do this. I could get the square root of 36, and then I could divide that by the number that's the square root of 4. Square root of 36 is 6, the square root of 4 is 2, so I could simplify that to 6 divided by 2, or 3. There's another way I could do it though. I could say that radical 36 divided by radical 4 equals the square root of the expression 36 divided by 4. I could bring this, this, and this together under the square root sign. 36 divided by 4 is 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. So I get the same answer. Well, that's our lesson on approximating and finding square roots. Now it's time to test your skill. Go to www.mastermath.info and download the worksheet on approximating and finding square roots. After you've tested yourself there, go back to Master Math and try the quiz on approximating and finding square roots. I hope you learned something. I hope you had a good time, and I hope I see you again real soon.